Hey Luke here with catsandcarp.com and I'm going to show you 10 knots that every fisherman should know starting with the knotless knot. This knot is very popular in the UK and Europe and it's so simple it's hard to screw up. That makes it a very powerful, very quick and effective knot. It requires you to cut off a piece of leader. You feed the leader through the front of the eyelet then you wrap it around the shank seven or eight times and then you feed the leader back through the back of the eye and you're done. That's it. You can do this with braid or you can do it with mono. It works equally well with both. And this is a knot that I've used thousands of times and I can't remember ever having it fail. I've used this knot with hooks as big as 10 knot and as small as number 10. It's a very versatile knot and it's the basis for a lot of other knots that I'm going to show you. So it's kind of a foundational knot. Unlike a lot of other knots, the line doesn't have to be wet for it to dress properly. And it's really strong and it's rarely to let you down. Now I'm going to show you how to tie a stinger knot. It's basically two hooks in tandem. You use this for pike fishing, cat fishing, shark fishing. It's a great rig when you have a fish and you want to put either multiple baits or you want to put two hooks in a very large bait. So if you're using like a large herring and you want one hook in the head and one hook in the tail, this works really good. You start off by simply tying a knotless knot, just like we just talked about. Then you feed another hook in only you feed it backwards so the line comes in through the back instead of the front and then you tie a knotless knot and then you simply feed it through like you would normally and you're done that's it and uh, you can set any distance you want between that you can set as many hooks as you want you can put three four six twelve hooks in a row whatever you want to do um, this is great for making little sabiki rigs too but uh, another thing that's really nice about the knotless knot is it's really easy to salvage the rig. So if you don't like it, it's really, it comes off very simply. So you just pull the, the line out and pop, comes off and you can salvage your hooks. The egg loop knot is a fabulous knot whenever you're fishing with soft baits that fall off the hook very easily, whether it's liver or salmon eggs or hot dogs or mushy baits or anything like that. That little loop on the shank of the hook helps pin the bait to the hook. To tie the egg loop knot, you start off tying a knotless knot. You feed the leader, a piece of leader that's cut off through the front of the eye, and you wrap it around the shank. Only you don't do it just seven or eight times. You keep going and wrapping all the way down the length of the shank until you get to the beginning of the bend, or at least till even with the hook point. You want these wraps to be very clean, very tight, close together, nice and pretty. Once you get to the distance you want, you feed the back of the leader through the eyelet as if you're going to finish up a knotless knot, but you don't tighten it up. Next, you're going to want to get that tag end and uh, pop it up and clip it off so it stays out of your way. Once that is done, take this little loop and you'll notice that one end of the loop is up against the shank and the other is heading out towards the eye of the hook. Take the part that's against the shank and wrap it around the part that is going towards the eyelet. And you see you're just kind of like doing a whipping knot if you've ever done uh, fly tying. Same sort of thing. Basically you're just wrapping one end of the loop around the other against the hook. And you do this five or six times and you'll see that it should pull cinch uh, close really really nice if you get to this part and then the knot won't dress properly it won't form up like this it's because you've whipped the wrong end of the loop around the shank you've done that part backwards when it's all done this is what the egg loop knot should look like it has this retractable loop that you can open up and use to pin soft baits to the shank of the hook if you ever have a problem with bait falling off the hook, this is the knot you want to use. It's a very good knot. Next is the polymer knot, one of the most simple classic knots that everyone should know. You fold a piece of line over, make a loop, and you shove that loop through the eye of the lead or the hook or the swivel. Then you do a simple overhand knot with the loop, and it should look just like this. Okay. Just a basic overhand knot using the loop that's shoved through the eye. Then you take the end of the loop, the part there on the left, 
and you feed the hook or swivel or lead through that loop and you pull it tight and that's it. One advantage of the polymer knot is that you don't need to clip off a piece of leader to do this. You can tie something directly to your main line. Okay, stopper knots. It's the knot that's used to keep a bead and a float from traveling up the line. It's an adjustable knot that slides up and down your line. This is a very versatile knot that is used in a lot of other knots. Uh, so it's a great one to uh, learn and it's essential if you're going to be fishing with floats. You simply make an overhand knot onto your main line and then just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping, usually about seven times, give or take. It's not an exact science, but the more you wrap, the harder it is to dress the knot, and but the, the more force it'll take to have the stopper knot travel up and down the line. So if you want more friction, make more loops. You want it to be quick and easy, do less. But you dress it like this, and there you go. Just clip off the ends, and then you've got this little knot that slides up and down the yellow line. And when you want it off, you just slide it off the end like that. So an adjustable stinger hook, this is basically the same as the stinger hook knot that I showed you before, but it's adjustable so that if you're using different size baits, you can adjust where the distance of the two between the two hooks. So this is really good if you're fishing with one big fish with two hooks in it, like for shark fishing or pike fishing. So you do a, a simple knotless knot and then you tie, put the other hook on and it's just sliding up and down the line here. Then what you use is you do a stopper knot that pins the shank of the hook to the leader. Okay, so just go and make your simple overhand loop, wrap it over and over again seven or eight times. The more you wrap it, the more friction you'll get. And this will make it so that that top hook is adjustable. You can slide it up and down the leader but it won't flop around. So this is a real application of the two knots you've already learned, the knotless knot and the stopper knot. Put them together and now you have an adjustable stinger rig, which is great for fishing uh, with big baits. So look at that, just slides up and down. I've also used similar uh, techniques for adjustable hair rigs. If you don't have a lead slider, you can also use one of these stopper knots to make a do-it-yourself lead slider. Okay, let's talk about the double uni knot. Anytime you want to attach two lines together, you use the double uni knot. It can be floral to braid, braid to mono, braid to braid, mono to mono, whatever, doesn't matter. This is great for attaching shock leaders. It's good for doing backings on your reel. So you have like a mono backing and then a braid topper. Essentially, all the double uni knot is is two stopper knots. So the, now that you've learned how to do the stopper knot, you can do the double uni knot. What you do is you see these two lines. There's the blue and the yellow line. You're attaching the yellow line to the blue line with a stopper knot. And then you're attaching the blue line to the yellow line with a stopper knot. The two stopper knots want to slide in opposite directions and they bump into each other and that's how you create the double uni knot. The hardest part about tying this knot is dressing it. And when I say dressing, what I'm talking about is pulling the knot tight. As you pull the knot tight, it can bunch up on you and end up not being all pretty and neat. The key is to put tension on all four lines coming out of this knot. See, there's two yellow lines coming out of the knot and two blue lines coming out of the knot. Just put a little bit of tension on all of those and kind of work the knot down all at the same time. If you do that, it'll come out really pretty. Another important step in properly dressing this knot is to make sure the line is wet. When it comes time to pull everything tight and to dress the knot, you want the lines to be wet. So you can either dunk them in water or lick the knots to, to kind of give it a lubricant so everything slides together properly. And you'll watch me do this here. I said, once I get it all ready, I go and kind of put it in my mouth and just put some saliva on it. And that saliva will act as a nice little lubricant to try to make everything slide together properly when you're pulling it. So you can kind of just take it slow and try to put tension on all four lines coming out of the knot. And boom, there you go. A nice, tight, pretty little knot. And when you pull them, you see both the stopper knots come together and boom, they bump into each other and it becomes solid. You trim off the excess, and this has a very low profile, so that when this is traveling through the eyelets of your rod, it doesn't snag and, and rip out your eyelets or break on, uh, the line. 
The low profile of the double uni knot is why I think it's the best knot for connecting two lines. Okay, now for the clinch knot or fisherman's knot. This knot's advantage is that you don't need to cut off a piece of leader to tie it. You can tie it straight on to your main line. It's also relatively simple. The downside is that it's easy to do wrong and to screw up. So all you do is you feed the line through the eyelet, then you twist the hook or swivel or whatever about seven or eight times. You feed it back through the first loop and then you feed the tag end through the loop you just created and that's it. When you're dressing the knot, you want to pull the tag end a little bit first and then you want to pull it down and kind of work the knot, pull the main line and work the knot down to the eye and it should dress up really nice, especially if you lick or wet the knot first. The key to this knot is making sure you put as many loops in the knot as, as you need. If you put too many wraps in the knot, it won't dress properly. If you don't put enough, the knot will slip. About seven or eight wraps normally does it, but you may need more or fewer wraps depending on the diameter of line you're using and the type of line you're using. So if you have not enough wraps and a hook pulls because the knot slipped, this is what the end of your line will look like. So if you lose your rig and you reel it in and you see the curly cues on the end of the line, that means your knot slipped. That tells you you tied your knot wrong. If, however, something uh, nicks the line or, and the line fails, when you lose your, your rig and you reel it in, you'll have just a, a clean cut. It won't be curly tailed on the end. That's how you tell what failed. Okay, one of my favorite knots is the surgeon's loop. I use this all the time. Whenever I tie up some rigs, I on the end of the rig, the non-hook end of the rig, I put a surgeon's loop. You simply make a loop and then you put an overhand knot and cinch it up. It's kind of like the polymer knot. But this is really basic, it's really strong, and it works well. Um, so anytime you want to put a loop in something, this is how you do it. It takes two seconds. Now if you use an overhand knot, you'll notice there's a bend and the loop's kind of at an angle. So if you don't want that, you want it to look a little bit prettier, you can use a figure eight knot, which is also a little bit stronger. So pretty much instead of making an overhand loop, you're making a figure eight. So you basically start off like an overhand loop, then you twist the loop and pull the tag end through. And you can see here how it makes kind of a figure eight. And uh, you just pull that tight. And then now the loop will be straight with the rest of the, the line. It's a little bit stronger too, but either works. Okay, the hair rig is a great carp fishing rig. I use it a lot for cat fishing too. It's a rig where you put your bait on the hair or the piece of string, not the hook. A hair rig allows you to fish with baits that won't fit on the point of a hook and it improves your hookup ratio. But it basically starts off with a surgeon's loop. So that knot we just learned, you make a surgeon's loop, you put a knot in the end of the line, and then you make that the end of your leader and you do a knotless knot. So basically you're doing a knotless knot using a piece of leader that has a surgeon's loop on the end and that's it. So you're taking the knotless knot and the surgeon's loop and you're combining them and that's making the hair rig. And this is an excellent, excellent rig for carp fishing and for cat fishing. Anytime you have a bait that won't fit on the hook properly or if you have very sensitive hook shy fish uh, or if you're worried about gut hooking fish with small hooks, this works really well. You can see here this bait I'm using is a boilie, which is a great bait for both catfish and carp. And you just slide it onto the hair using a baiting needle. And then you put a little bait stop, which is just a piece of plastic, through the loop. You can also use a stick or whatever. And that keeps the bait from sliding back off the hair. And there you go. That's a hair rig. One of the most popular rigs in Europe. Okay, let's show you a dropper's loop. Okay, this is a great knot. But all it is is essentially a surgeon's loop. Now there's different ways to do it. And uh, people can tie dr dropper uh, loops a lot of different ways, but essentially you can use the surgeon's loop, and there you go. If you make a loop, tie an overhand knot, and boom, you've got it. And this is a, a, a great rig. You can and, uh, put a hook on it. So if you want a hook dangling off your main line, or a lead dangling off your main line, you don't need it to slide up and down. This works great. You feed the loop through the eye, and then feed the loop over the the hook and you're good to go 
And so if you're trying to make a trot line, this is a great way to do it. Or you're trying to make a dropper hook or a dropper rig, this is a great way to do it. And this is the loop-to-loop -loop knot, which is basically a, uh, a knot you use to attach surgeon's loops to things. You basically put the loop through the other loop, and boom, you're good to go. Once you've mastered the loop-to-loop -loop knot and the surgeon's loop, you can tie the helicopter rig. This is a great rig for fishing off the bottom in current or in snaggy places, and it's just three surgeon's loops. Well, if you liked that video, check out some of our other great videos, including the six best ways to keep chicken liver on your hook and my six best tips for bank fishing. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks for watching.